everybody. I wanted to give you an opportunity to learn at least one way to make a heat map in Adobe Illustrator. There are multiple ways that you can do it, but I haven't found any good videos that were made by somebody else, so I decided to make one for you. Just similarly, like I made the radial bar charts down here, you might want to make a heat map, and the instructions aren't so straightforward, so I wanted to give you an opportunity to learn about that. All right, so let's get started. So I'm going to click New File, and I'm going to make this one for the web because in the video I don't really need high resolution. I'm going to just choose the common size for now, and by selecting web it's going to put me in RGB color and 72 pixels per inch. Alright, so that's a pretty good starting place. I'm going to give it a little title here. I'm just going to call this Heat Map Example, and then I'm going to click Create. So I have a canvas coming up now that I can work with. And normally when I'm going to make a chart, I look for my graphs and charts tools. If they don't appear on your toolbar here, you can come down to these three dots. It says Edit Toolbar. And then you can look at the different types of tools that are here. You can see that a lot of your graph tools are here in this area. you got some column charts, stacked column graphs, bar graphs, stacked bar graphs, line graphs, area graphs, scatter plots, pie charts, and finally radar graph tools. None of those really shout out to me as being something to make a heat map with. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to go to my grid area, which is up here. You got a polar grid and you got a rectangular grid, and I could use either if I wanted to or something else. Um, but I'm going to go with the rectangular grid, and then I'm just going to make a grid here. And before I release it, I'm going to make this one a 3x3 three three grid. So I'm right now hitting my left arrow tool to reduce the number of vertical sections to 3, and then the down tool to also select the horizontal lines as 3. And I can resize this and keep this shape. If I hit hold shift, for example, I can get a nice perfect square there. And I'm making this heat map kind of reminiscent of something that I, I'm a little bit nostalgic about. I used to love watching baseball games, and somewhere along the line they started putting little heat maps like this across the batter's box to show you where pitch location, where different pitches were, how well batters hit, with red being they hit well in that area, with the, the pinks not as well but still pretty good. White would be they were kind of neutral 50-50 whether they hit in that area. And then it started getting blue on the other side where blue was where they, they got out, got struck out a lot or missed, swung and missed a lot. I'm going to make something similar to that. Let's get started. So we have the grid now. And what I want to do is I want to create a range of colors that I can fill these boxes in. And I can actually do each box separately if I wanted to. And that would work fine, just assigning a different color to each box, giving a color with a key some kind of value. But what I usually like to do when I'm doing something like this is I like to create a gradient. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to create a key gradient, and then I'm going to assign some numbers to the gradient, and then I'm going to fill in the boxes. All right, so that's the plan, and that's what I'm going to show you. Okay, so I use my rectangle tool to make a box. I held down shift so it would be square because square works nicely for me. Sometimes I use a stroke around the box, other times I don't. All really depends on what I want to do with it, but for now I'm going to, to take the stroke out. So I'm going to go to my stroke line here and I'm going to hit the red slash to take that out. And then I want to give the box a color. Usually when you're doing, working with heat maps, not always, but often you use a warm color for your bigger numbers, your higher hits. And you know, if you want to show that the batter is hot in that position, or if you want to show that you made a lot of sales on that product, it is a good color. Although sometimes what red indicates is negative. So we have to be careful. For my cooler sales or whatever I'm recording here, I'm going to go with a cool color. So typically red to blue is, is a good way to go. This is kind of similar to what they did in baseball games back in the day. But I'm going to choose red for my box. And then I want to take my select tool and I'm going to hold down Option. If you're on a PC, you hold down Alt. And I'm going to click and drag it down. And I'm going to change the color there to blue. So I'm going to do a red to blue gradient. And I would like to go through white at the middle. So I'm going to see if I can do a gradient of three colors. So I'm going to bring this down somewhere in between these two. Holding Shift and Option as I drag, I pulled another shape of the box, but I also kept it in line. So let's make this white. Uh, where the white is my middle color. Now once I click off that white, it's going to be really hard to see. 
in fact impossible, right? Unless I hover over it. So for now, until I have everything the way I want it, I'm going to give this one a little bit of a black stroke. And I should now at least be able to see where it is. I want to get these boxes lined up evenly. So if I select all three, I can come to my align tools and hit the horizontal align center just to make sure, even though I was holding shift and dragging, to make sure that's still in line. And then I want these distributed evenly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute the vertical centers of the boxes. And you'll see that move that up so it's evenly spaced. So now that I have everything aligned where I want it to be, and I don't want that black line to affect anything, I'm just going to turn that off. And we'll be able to select it and without seeing it. All right, so I want to select all three. I just clicked and dragged with my select tool over all three. And what I want to do is I want to make a blend. So I'm going to come down here to Object Blend, and I'm going to go to Blend Options. And under here, I can make a smooth gradient from red to blue, or I can choose to use specific distances between them or specific steps. I'm going to choose specific steps this time, and I have nine boxes, so I want to choose eight steps because we're already going to have the starting box. And I can adjust that later if I want to. So I'm clicking OK on that. And also orientation, I want everything aligned straight. So I'm aligning to the page, although the path and the page are both aligned the same. So it doesn't matter too much here. OK, so I'm going to click OK. Now if I come back to Object, Blend, and Make, I have a gradient of equal steps that starts with red and goes down to blue with white in the middle. And you can see that these are the hot colors, getting a little less hot, getting a little less hot average, getting cooler, and so on and so forth. Now all I really have to do is assign a scale and put the colors in here where I need them to be. But first I want to adjust my gradient to a fewer number of boxes. Okay, so I have more colors than I need, so I want to get rid of some of these colors. I can select my blend, go to Object, and I can go back to Blend and then Blend Options. What I'm thinking now is I have three boxes that I started with. So if I take off those three, I have six each in two parts. So what I want to do is I want to make two three-step parts. And instead of making all these tiny little boxes of which I don't need, what I can more easily do is, after selecting, click OK. And notice now that I have nine boxes in the range of colors that I need. I can now take that and fill my colors. So that's a pretty good way to work. One other thing I'd like to do here is because when I click off this, you'll notice this middle box, now I can't see it at all. One of the things that I can do here so that I can see this box is maybe give my whole design a background, something a different color than what I'm going to be used, but something that works into my color palette. I will also need something that's going to have good contrast with this whole range. Um, so it's a tall order, but I'm going to give it a shot here. Just for purposes of demonstrating, I'm going to make a box here. Blue is probably not good because I have the range of blues already. I think I probably want to stay in a grayscale and I want to be able to see the red and blue and all the gradients pretty well and especially make that white box pop out a little more. So what I'm going to do, I think, is go to a dark gray. And to move that to the back, if I hold down Command and I hold down my left bracket tool, that pushes it to the back. And now you can see very clearly that the white is there. And I'm going to move it all the way to the back by holding Command Shift and the left bracket tool. And now, now my boxes are here as well. So now what I've done is I, I have no lines between the gradient except for where the color changes. And I have something I can work with here. So now how do I get the colors I need into here? Let me, let's make a color range of values. I'm going to do that and I'll be back in a minute. All right, so I made up a range of numbers that I wanted to use. Now I have them all selected. I want to make sure that they're all aligned properly. So I'm going to hit center align and I want to make sure that they are arranged evenly. So I'm going to use my distribute tool and I'm going to distribute the vertical centers so that they're lined up properly. And now you can see they are all aligned properly with the colors. So the last step is to start filling these colors. Now, how do I get the colors into the different boxes? The best way to do that is with my live paint tool. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to activate this as a live paint object. So I'm going to go with that selected to Object, and I'm going to come down to Live Paint, and I'm going to go down to Make. All right, so now this is a Live Paint object. So deselect it, go to the Eyedropper tool, select a color, and now I'm going to hit K to get to my Live Paint tool. 
And you see how each of the boxes now is going to light up. So I can paint inside those boxes. So I'm going to paint my blue here. I'm going to uh, go back to I, select the next color, K again. And I'm just going to do one color in each box. So now I'm going to click the third color. Fourth color. Keep going back between I and K to get the color that I need. I hit I, select it in my gradient, and then get back to the live paint. I'm hitting K. So now I have my object painted. I can select it as a whole object and change the stroke if I want to. Let's say I wanted to eliminate the stroke. I could just give it that gray background. So I can do a bunch of other things here, but right now I'm going to leave this as it is. I kind of like to have this a little closer. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select all of that, drag it over, align it a little better with my chart, put this on this side, bring that over, and then I probably want to align the centers of these two. So I'm going to select both, go back to my alignment tool and vertical align center. Um, so now I have it the way I want. I just want to make my whole artboard smaller. So if I hit Shift and O, that's my adjustment tool for the artboard size. Um, so if I hover over the intersections, I can make my artboard smaller. So now I don't have so much wasted space. If I go to my Select tool, you can see that this gray area is past the sizes of the artboard. And if I save Illustrator, it's going to save it as this whole thing. Use artboards is grayed out here. So my Illustrator file is going to hold that if I don't shrink it myself. I'm just going to click Save. I don't care that it's there. Let's say I'm not going to use the Illustrator in my file in my final product, but I want to use a PNG that I make from this. Or I can use a JPEG. You can just go to File Export. Now I'm going to export that as a PNG. And you see now I can choose Artboards. So what that's going to do is it's going to crop it to the artboard. So I no longer need to see these edges. So I'm going to click Export and click OK. You can see when I click on the JPEG that it's not showing all that extra gray, just the part that was in the artboard. That's one way you can make a heat map. There are many, many other ways. Some people like making them over maps. If you made a USA map or a map of your state that had the political boundaries in it and then made it a live paint object, you could paint the colors into the map so you could make like a choropleth map. So think about what you like to do with heat maps if you want to use them. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you create. Have a great day, everybody. Mm -hmm.